for an adult audience. Love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L V E one nine one. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. What's going on there, Drew? Not uh, much. You have a good birthday uh, softball game? Yeah, I've had a nice softball game. There was pie, there was barbecue, and there was softball. These are my favorite things. Yeah. I didn't know you liked banana cream pie, though. I like it from uh, the apple pan. Oh, yeah. Special place. Uh, yeah. Elaborate. Yeah. I've never seen so much meat in one place. Not yeah. since I like saw a zebra killed by a group of lions or something. I'll tell you, there's... Uh, well, I'll just go ahead and drop names. A place called uh, Dr. Hogley Wogley's in uh, Van Nuys. Yeah. Great barbecue. The best. I like the fact that they, you guys didn't just limit it to ribs. No. Sausage, chicken, anything anything that came G- off an animal. Well, Jimmy, <laughs> you know, Jimmy's a maniac. Jimmy calls me on uh, Thursday, and I, he was in his dressing room, I guess. He called me up in the writer's room, and he's, I need to talk to Adam. So uh, he, he's like, what kind of meat do we want for this barbecue? I said, uh, no, he said, what do you like better, the spare ribs or the beef ribs? I said, uh, I, I like the spare ribs. I think they're more flavorful. He goes, check. Okay, gotcha. And then he hangs up the phone, and then the meat starts showing up at the party. He's got the spare ribs. He's got the beef ribs. He's got the pork brisket. He's got the beef brisket. He's got the hot links, and he's got the chicken. Yeah. And he has he has 60 pounds of all five or six different meats, like I don't know what meat we were missing. Possibly minced meat, maybe spam. I, I know ostrich. I, I don't yeah, know. there's some emu that wasn't that yeah. uh, didn't get delivered, evidently. But a, a rib from every animal <laughs> was was uh, represented at this at this barbecue. Yeah, and Brian reminded me. I that, don't know why he called me. Want to know which one I, I wanted that, when he just bought all of them? That's the comedy. But Brian reminded me that I pointed out how the uh, the human species behaves around sort of a, a recent kill, I and mean, all the men were sort of crouched down, powering meat, telling jokes. Mm-hmm. There, were, there were women folk, and yeah. occasionally a young male would venture over to try to court away one of the women from the uh, little clan. Yeah, it guys get very, very visceral around uh, the softball. The bat becomes a club. Oh yeah, the uh, the meat. Well, that's meat. So uh, yeah, we had a a delightful time. Also, uh, the, I like uh, banana cream. It's not at the top of my pie list, although mm. I do enjoy it. But it if you huge. go to the right place, it was, a, it was quite a pie. You yeah. get a nice pie. Yeah. And uh, somebody wanted to uh, work a uh, chocolate cream in there, but uh, I dismiss that as so much pudding, pudding in a pie cream. shell yeah, with yeah. some uh, Cool Whip on yeah. top of it. Yeah. That, that you're not fooling me. I know pudding in a pie shell when I see it. That ain't pie, my friend, just because it has the word pie in it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's pie in the skies, what that is. Thank you, Drew. Mm-hmm. Had a delightful time. Then went out with Drew and his lovely wife oh, uh, right. Saturday night for a nice dinner. That was fun. A lot of Drew this weekend. Yeah. Had a nice uh, bottle of wine and ate a steak. Yeah, more meat. <laughs> we had not enough meat. <laughs> well, let me let me tell you my uh, my my meat regimen. Uh, Nothing but ribs all, all day on Saturday, and then Saturday night out for a nice steak with uh, Dr. Drew. And then uh, today, uh, basketball hoops and uh, finished off the rest of the meat. Of course. Yeah. They, work, they uh, come right back to life. You put that, you put, you know what a microwave is? It's like, uh, to me, a microwave, yeah, it's what a yeah. crash cart is to, uh, to a dead patient. Yeah. It's yeah. the paddles. Bring Clear. Boom. Boom. Yes. Good as new. Yes, I put I put the ribs in there. Put them in for a minute and thirty three seconds. Not a minute and thirty seconds. I'm a big time saver. I press three twice. I get the extra three seconds. No problem. Besides, it's not a minute thirty. That's just a random, arbitrary number anyway. But the point is, is it brought that uh, brought those ribs and brisket right back to life today. And I ate the rest of the pie today too. Of course. Mm-hmm. Trying to kill myself with food. <laughs> I suggest you all join me. Brandy. Yeah. It's great, you know. It's great when your birthday. First off, my birthday's not till tomorrow, but I declared it my birthday on Friday. Your birthday weekend. Well, just been, Memorial Day, May, me. Just been we figured that out on Thursday. Just, uh, just drinking and eating pie uh, for four days straight now, and then tomorrow it's my birthday. <laughs> Sorry, Brandy. Happy birthday. Thank you, but you got to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Well, here it's midnight, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, this is Missouri. Good times. <laughs> Happy birthday, you're not special. All right, baby doll, what's up? By the way, Anderson was not happy with not being invited to your party. 
Oh, well, look, let me ex- let me explain something. I, uh, I intentionally uh, structure my life this way. I don't get involved. Yeah, I know. M- my wife sent out the emails. I know. Jimmy was doing it and whoever was doing it. And it was basically all the people who played softball the year before. I don't care. I don't care if I wasn't invited. It's the fact that Brian was. That pisses me off. <laughs> Brian, Brian wasn't invited. Brian just said something about softball, or I said something to him about softball. I didn't invite and, and Brian. Wasn't to, here that night too. It was Thursday night. Oh, it was. I didn't invite night. Brian to a birthday party. I invited Brian to a softball game that he's played in in the past. You see what I'm saying? Brian likes softball. What I don't? I don't know. I already challenged you. I'd kick your ass to softball. Oh, really? Guaranteed. I've seen your swing on mm. the man show. Mm. Not too good. Mm. I think Brian's got to. Brian, you got to talk to uh, talk to Anderson. Yeah, Anderson got those Thank those, you. those legs. No, uh, no, mm-hmm. no. He don't. He don't got. He don't got the pop of the bat that the A man has. <laughs> right. Next oh. caller. Right, yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, two. And how Ooh. dare you? And Drew, oh, don't shake Christ that thing. Sake. There we go. All right. All right where right, are we, two, Drew? Two. All right. Brandy. Brandy. Yeah. What's up? Um, I had a question about the Depo Provera share. Mm-hmm. Um, I was wondering if it could make you infertile. No. No. Because, well, I've been having, I've been on it for about two weeks now. Yeah. And I've been having, like, pains in my stomach. Right. You'll get your, you'll bleed, basically, for a couple of months. Um, I haven't bled. Well, okay. I stopped the day, I stopped bleeding the day I got it. So, okay. I haven't done any of that. All right, well, typically what you do is bleed the first shot and then no period from then on. Sometimes it can stop right away, but that's how it works. You stop your period. All right, but good times. That has nothing to do with fertility, nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Okay, so it can't hurt my ovaries? No. No, no. she's fine. No. Let's talk to Shea. Shea? Shea? Shea, yeah. What's up? What's happening there, Shea? Nothing much. I'm just sitting here. This is depression night. Yeah. And I'm going to hang up on you if you don't whip it up real fast. What do you mean? No. <laughs> like. That, I don't mean let more air escape. I mean, get it together. Let's go. you got to rally. You're on the radio. Okay. Here you go. And Shay, 15. Okay. My parents do not allow me to see my, my boyfriend because they think that I'm going to go and make some huge mistake, which they already know that I've made before. And they just won't allow me to see him because we're moving to Texas and they think that I'm going to go screw him and I'm going to end up getting pregnant and I'm going to screw up my life like that. Right. Well, it sounds reasonable. And you did that already once already? Yeah. And okay, well, that's where they get the idea that you might do it again. Well, they don't really know that. They just have this feeling that I wasn't like... <laughs> no, they know you have a feeling there. based on... Your previous behavior. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, well that's how you get feelings about stuff. Like when you feel like, hey, we better lock this guy up we better stop him before he kills again. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. It's all feelings based on him killing the first time. Right. Not that you having sex is a homicide, but everything in life is sort of based on the last time you came to the plate and what you did. Well, that's the thing that they only, like, thought that I did, and then I, like, convinced them that I didn't, and then, like, they think that I'm just going to go and be- either do it again or do it for the first time. And I was- we didn't follow one word of that. I did. She's just being, she, she's just dancing around the truth. She she did do it the first time. Convinced parents. Convinced they didn't have any. Didn't. They didn't have any real proof that she did, mm. and she somehow talked them out of it. Yeah. But doesn't doesn't mean you didn't do it. Yeah, but they think that I didn't. But they always know that the possibility was over. Well, then they're even smarter <laughs> than you. They're even wiser than you give them Listen. credit. Listen, somebody zombie Shay, you're, in your background. You're, you're, did you? What happened? You get dropped on your head when you were younger? No, my sister hit me with a frying pan, though. That could do it. <laughs> yeah. That could, that could do it. Cause, yeah. Yeah, because there's some retardation in your voice. No, there isn't. Is your head the shape of a frying pan? That happens. No, no my head is not the shape of a frying oh, pan. Hmm. All right, now I'm confused. All right, so here's, he, here's the deal. Uh, don't get pregnant. Don't have sex. Move to Texas. You don't want to. You don't want to be screwing around with this guy if you're moving to Texas anyway. True. There we go. It's on. The monitor goes out when you t- when you hit it with your foot. No, it just it just it was going out when I hit the table at all. Yeah, you can't touch anything I in know. here. Do you understand? It's high tech. This place is like a Faberge egg, mm. except for Faberge eggs look nice. Mm. This is 
all the sort of delicacy of a Faberge egg, except for it looks like a, a plastic putrid thing. It's it's like uh, someone took the egg that uh, legs the uh, the uh, jury know what I'm talking about. The the legs the, yeah. the, the pantyhose comes in yeah nice. and then cramped in it. Oh, that's that's what this place that's looks good. like. Brian, yo, brother, what's up, man? You're 17. What's going on? Uh, actually, uh, you know, even though your birthday is tomorrow, I just want to say uh, happy birthday, Adam, and uh, thank you, Brian. You know, I think you should have uh, Anderson play your favorite Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Uh, oh. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> oh, oh, Brian. No, he's mad because he didn't get invited to the softball game. Screw, screw him, man. I know. Yeah, but the Blood, Sweat, and Tears is torturing the poor man. Yeah, he should. He should learn to live with it, man. It's it's great music. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up! Anderson has an aversion to quality. Yo, Anderson can go to hell, man. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. What's up? All right. Uh, well, I just want to say... What is that? <laughs> you look great. Brian sound like a delight. Sean? Yeah. You're 24? Yeah. You want to know if ecstasy can cause nightmares and cold sweats? Yeah. Yeah. How long after you used it? Um, I took it on Friday. And you, yeah, absolutely. In fact, you for a couple of days. Yeah. And if you, yeah. is that the first it's time? It's kind you... of, um, like, I haven't really, um, I haven't really actually fought, I mean, like, I've, I've, I've slept, but it hasn't been like, like sleeping, sleeping. Right after, um, I fall asleep, I'll start to, I'll start to have really, like, really weird dreams. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like violent dreams. Mm -hmm. About, <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Are you taking any other medication? No, no. And you only don't actually see once? Have have I done it more than once? Yes. Yeah. How many times? Uh, more than I'd care to comment. All right. Like I haven't done it. Um, I haven't. It's been the last time I took it was Friday. It was me and my girlfriend, and before that, it's probably been like four or five months. I used to do it a lot um, when I was younger, but not really anymore. It tends to have more of a cumulative effect. It doesn't really matter the a what. It doesn't really matter that you take periods of time in between the uses. It, it, really? It, yeah, it doesn't seem to make that much difference. Nah, I bet it does. It, it makes intuitive sense that it should make some difference, and it probably makes some, but not much. So Much less than it sh you would think it would, let's put it that way. So it's the amount of times it's you've done it period. over the total dose. period. Yeah. Yeah. Total dose. Finding yeah. out bad things about this drug, yeah. at least according to Drew. Yeah. Although with doctors, you never can tell. Because I, I really, we haven't talked about this in a while, but uh, I don't know where it came up the other day, but Doctors get into that, uh, hey. Hand, uh, hand. You, this you, is the rest of the hand thing. Yeah, what were we talking about? Yeah, no, I was saying, you know, doctors do this and they lose their credibility. They go, look, you smoke three cigarettes a day, you, th you smoke three packs a day. It's no different. You're a smoker and it's going to kill you. They, they do that kind of stuff. And it's stuff that's like, huh, what? You know, you wearing the seatbelt half the time is like never wearing the seatbelt. You using a condom half the time is like never wearing a condom. Or if you, you know, if you don't wear a condom one time out of 20 times, it's like never wearing it. You might as well not wear it. They, they, they throw around these things. They're sort of, they're, they're part doctor, but they're also like part Jewish mom. And that stuff, people stop listening to them a little bit when they start throwing that stuff around. And I think, uh, I think this is what goes on sometimes with some of these drugs. One exposure to so and so is enough to, you know, they were doing this a lot with coke, you know, just just one exposure, just just once, just one time. Mm -hmm. They're really nailing this down, and then everyone would, everyone knew people that did it fifty times, and it was right. like, man, eh, he's alive. Yeah, especially coke, you know. Yeah, no. But, but the problem is, is ecstasy does screw up your brain. That's the problem. And people aren't getting that message because I think we hit the other stuff a little too hard. And the problem with ecstasy is some of the stuff doesn't show up till down the road. You know, well after you use it sometimes. I was reading some, uh, and what are we doing still on pot? I was just reading some article in the paper uh, last week about uh, some mayor or governor or something of some state is going to go a little bit easier on medical marijuana mm. people now. And now they can have, really, this, this, that, this is what we're still, what? Let me check my watch. What are we in, 2003? <laughs> really? Really? Still, this is it? Federal agents going in and busting pot? Farms that uh, giving out the uh, roaches to uh, guys with AIDS in uh, San Francisco. This this is where the resources are going. This is what we're talking about. Really, we're still talking about it, still discussing it. Don't don't people know that some people like smoking pot and other people don't really much care for it. And the ones that like smoking pot seem to smoke pot, and the ones that don't care for it don't really do it. And that's about it. Yep. Plain and simple. That's it. And listen, if you got AIDS. 
smoke out. Mm-hmm. Be my guest. I'm with you. We give you morphine. Why not pot? I, I, it, it drives me insane. And, you know, the doctors say, well, they're more effective things. And, okay, but maybe the guy likes his joint. His body's riddled with cancer. He wants a toke on his joint. Let him have a couple tokes before he kicks off. Well, the, but really, I think that the real lunacy is why is it okay to give a profoundly addictive drug, morphine, but not okay to give that marijuana? I, I don't why know. Okay? I, I don't. I, I, it, it's obviously there's no logic in it. I just want to know what, what, why the government is still talking about it. Like, we have to have, have a goddamn conversation about this every third week. And uh, whoever whoever's in charge has to, uh, you know, the drug czar's got to send uh, agents down to bust these, com- you know, these pot farms After he and stuff. In, in Vegas. Yeah, when he's when he's done <laughs> stuffing eight million dollars in uh, worth of nickels into a <laughs> slot machine at uh, Harris, then he can send his stormtroopers down to uh, bust the hippie in San Francisco is trying to give uh, roaches to the uh, people that are riddled with cancer. That's a, uh, that's a, uh, I, I just, what are we talking about it for? Poor Todd, uh, what was his name? Oh my, that guy that went to jail for. Woody Harrelson's yeah. friend who was in here. Yeah. Todd McCormick. Todd McCormick, there you go. Yeah. Still, uh, still, still languishing the, in jail, yeah. Uh, listen, I understand that there are drugs that are bad, and this is the other thing, too, that we don't do as a society. There's no shades of gray. I don't know why we're not interested in that as a society. You know, the, the uh, retard right-wing abortion guys, it's murder. It's murder, pure and simple. You know, I had a friend who lost his uh, seven-year-old daughter a couple of weeks ago. What? Yeah. Who? Jonathan was the uh, keyboard player for the Acme Theater. Great hmm, guy, great on. old friend, Holy nicest guy in the world. Sh- yes. He couldn't have been a nicer guy. His wife isn't uh, not a nicer hmm. woman than wife. And uh, a beautiful seven-year-old daughter, just boom, gone. What? Just a virus, huh? pow, gone. Oh, my God. Got it one night, gone the next day. Oh, my God. But the point is, is this is not the same as having an abortion in the first trimester. Mm-mm. And it's not even the same as, you know, stillborn. And it's not the same as a spontaneous abortion in the third trimester, you know. This is mm. devastation. There are shades of gray. Mm. They're, they're, hey, man, that's a bummer, and, boy, that's going to take a little something to get over. And then there's, hey, you're devastated. This, your life's not going to be the same, and you'll be carrying around this pain for as long as you're on the planet. And you'll have to cope with this every day. That's what this is. So here's what I'm saying, though. Murder is not murder. You know, that's devastation, mm-hmm. seven-year-old dying, not, not uh, a little uh, cap of gel at three weeks. Mm-hmm. And with drugs, they're drugs. There's you got your crack and you, you got your crank and your speed and all the heroin. Then you got your weed. There's a difference. There's a big difference. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why the government doesn't recognize the difference in things. You know, we're not really in. We don't I get think, the shades think, of gray thing I very well. In, in, when it comes to logic of morals and law, they try to come up with absolutes. This yes. This is right. This is wrong. Right. And, and now we're living in a society that uh, if you're out in the middle of the desert and there's a four-way stop sign and there's no other cars in sight and you don't come to a complete stop, you roll through it, you're getting the same ticket as if you blew through at 50. Mm-hmm. That's what you end up with. Mm-hmm. That's the life you end up with. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Well, we can't, we can't just figure out our own life, yeah. sort of decide what's safe and what's unsafe, decide that, hey, if we want to smoke a joint once in a while, it's our business. Can't have a pot plant in your yard. Couldn't handle that. Really? You don't You don't think I could have a pot plant in my yard? I, what would happen? Start peddling to the neighbor kids? You go insane. I go insane. I get up on the roof with a hunting rifle. Oh, of course. What would go on? I start dealing? Jesus Christ. I swear, one day when I get nutty enough, I'm growing a huge pot plant in my front yard, and I'm taking on the government. <laughs> I really am. When you get nutty. Okay. I can win that case. Idiots. Not a bad idea. Abby? Hello. You're 19. I am. What's up? Well, first of all, I'd like to say hi to both of you guys. How are you doing? Good. And hold on one second. Uh-oh. Where are all you gun-toting pussies? Where are you when, I, when I'm talking about my right to grow a pot plant? Where are you? Where are, where's Chuck Heston? Chuck Heston's like, yeah, confiscate the house, his car, and lock him up. Really? This is where you stand on, on, on freedoms? It makes me sick. I'd like to hear one of these gun-toting a-holes, one of these right-wing, uh, these uh, National NRA, Rifle yeah. NRA guys step up and say, yeah, we don't, we don't mind if a guy wants to grow a pot plant, too, once in a while. As long as he has a gun. Uh, yeah, they'll never do that. 
Abby? Hello. Go ahead. Okay. Try to follow this, guys. I was raped when I was 11 years old. Mm, good times. Um, just recently, actually in January, I had sex with a guy. It was my first time having sex since I was raped. It was my last time. Um, he, I don't know his last name. I don't have a phone number. I don't have an address. He has none of that information for me. He tried to get it. He wanted to know, you know, more about me, wanted to know anything. And I was just like, no, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. And what part of me feels like, okay, cool. I got that out of my system. Now I know if I have sex with someone that I actually care about, know something about, I'm not going to freak out and hit him or cry or something terrible like that. But part of me, it just makes me feel like a horrible slut. And I just wanted to know your opinion on that. That I, I suspect you'd been sexually abused in some way before you were 11, right? No. I thought she got raped at 13. I said 11. Yep. 11. And nothing happened? You weren't mm. abused in any way before that? Nope. Was it a violent rape? Yeah. Who did it? Uh, actually, a couple guys that I went to school with. They're a couple years older than me. They held you a gunpoint? Knife point? Knife. Knife point. It's a nice school. Yeah. <laughs> they were in what grade? I was in sixth grade. Um, the way our school worked was art classes and gym classes and stuff were just kind of you know, all the grades went to them together, just kind of intermingled, and they had failed or something. I mean, they were they were and, older than I was. And did well, you, how old? Like 13? I would, 15? I would say like 14, 15. Did you prosecute them? No. How come? What grade were they in? They were in eighth grade, but they should have been in high school by that point. And, and why weren't you, why didn't you press charges? I didn't tell anyone about it until I was a freshman in high school. I was out, I was just embarrassed and scared and... Where were you when this happened? I was at school. Then did you I fight? Was, it was, I was staying after for a basketball game, and I was just kind of hanging around the school, you know. Did you try, did you try to fight him off? I did. I tried to, yeah, but, you know, it's two on one. So you, so you didn't have any kind of a freeze reaction? Once they pulled out the knife and actually held it to my throat. You froze? Yeah. All right. Because that, that's normal at that point. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Point. Yeah, so... I, I just, I, this is during daylight hours, right? It was about four thirty, five o'clock. Well, there's lots of things that can be going on here, Abby. You, you could be having post-traumatic stress reactions, and you could be sort of trying to control those sorts of symptoms, which you'd expect to have after something like this. You could be having sort of disavowed aspects of yourself that you don't want to get in touch with, and so anything sexual becomes something that's sort of, again, disavowed. And so you can have sex with people you don't really care about or that you feel badly about, but to have somebody you really, truly are intimate with doesn't fit because you feel that that part of yourself is something that you 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 won't have anything to do with. You see? And the so if biggest, you, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. The biggest one. The biggest problem I've had with it was, you know, for years afterwards, I was just totally afraid of men, you know? Yeah. Yeah, understandable. And I think that's pretty normal. Yeah. But you but, you haven't had any treatment for this. There could be a lot of things going on. Yeah. Um, and, and, I joined a church shortly after that, and they had support groups and things for that sort of thing. Rape survivor. And yeah. How long did and you go to that? That helped me a lot. How long actually, did you? Actually, all but right. I didn't have any like professional. All right. Well, here's here's the deal. Very simple plan. Go ahead and have a relationship. Find somebody you really like. Be careful with who you're attracted to. Make sure it's not the bad guy, the the dangerous guy, the exciting guy. Try to be intimate. If you can't. Then you need professional help. All right, if that, you can, that's I don't understand the part where she had sex with a guy who was trying to find her, but because he, he, she couldn't stand the intimacy. Her thing was this: this has to be a this has to be a, a sort of a, a mm -hmm. wicked expression that I All have right. with this guy that I don't care about. Get that out of my system. All right, mm. purge myself of something. Yeah. All right, we'll take a, a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, love line, what's up? I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, that night off, that Memorial Day night off, made a huge difference. In what? I just feel like I got a week off. Yeah. Felt, it was amazing. Felt long. Yeah. Felt weird. Jesus. You know, uh, Jimmy's show was uh, off this week, too. Yeah. It's good news. This coming week. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Nice. I know. I was thinking to myself when I was eating my fourth rib and my fifth uh, spoonful of banana pie after playing six games of basketball about 4 o'clock today. The I coleslaw thought, was good, too. I oh, yeah. That. I thought, uh, I could do this every day. 
Yeah. I mean, uh, if this was my only gig, oh, yeah. Travis? Yeah, what's up? You're 18? Yeah. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Yep. All right. Hey, what's up, boys? Hey. Uh, I have a question. Um, I was having sex with my girlfriend the other night. And, uh, well, I just want to know if without a condom, can you get, can she still get pregnant without, without me coming? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Next caller. You can drool. You can dribble. You dribble. Pre-cum. Oh, uh, yeah? Do you, you pre-cum without knowing? Yes. Yeah. Really? How, how does it happen? Stuff leaks out when you get excited, period. So really? any, so if a penis goes into a vagina, there's a risk of pregnancy. Well, it's like you can drool when you're asleep and you don't know it. Right. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> Thank you. The, okay, uh, the, uh, about the morning after pill, how much would that cost? See? It's like... What, yeah. Yeah. What, Drew, Drew, you think he just, this wants to hear, he just wants to hear himself on the radio. Oh, okay. Travis, Drew doesn't believe you. It's about 35 bucks. Next call. All right. Drew's had an ass full of Travis. Well, he was like, um, um, and, uh, uh, Adam, what are you wearing right now? <laughs> uh, well, I'm wearing a flirty handful of chiffon and, uh, muck luck boots. There you go. All right, mm-hmm. let's, uh, what does it? let's talk to Stephanie, who's 17. Stephanie? Yeah. What's up? Um, how are you guys doing? Good. Okay, um, every guy I go out with, I get in a really serious relationship with. Mm-hmm. And it seems like no matter how much Wait, I Wait, I heard a smoke detector. I did too. Yeah, it, it needs a battery. All right, <laughs> let's just be quiet until it goes 30, again. 35 seconds, though, right? 35, yeah, 33 to 35 seconds. Are you in your bedroom? Yeah. Went off. H- how long have you been living with that? Um, a long time. <laughs> Months? Yeah. Years? No. Months. No, the the battery, the, the, Drew. If the low battery thing chirped for years, it would mean there was enough left in the battery. <laughs> they can go for a to long put time. all those chirps together to put a, right, put right, together listen, an alarm. Listen, here we go. Let's see, right now. There we go. There it is. There it is. Okay. All right, so that's uh, thirty six. Yeah. I'm doing the math here. I did time the first one. <laughs> We're at about a forty two second interval here, Drew. So. Uh, we just went off at uh, 36. We can look forward. <sighs> I'm, sure I'm too tired. 4 out of 52. So. Yeah, we'll work it out. I'll tell you when it's coming up. So you've had this smoke detector with the chirp going off every 42 seconds for how long in your bedroom? I say at least for six months. <laughs> I don't S- notice it now. Six months. Do you, do you understand that would drive an iguana crazy? <laughs> Yeah, it drives my grandmother crazy downstairs. She said I have a in my bedroom. Right. Downstairs. She's obviously a woman of action, this grandmother of yours. Yeah. Shh. Did we miss it? <laughs> Quiet. Wait a minute, we missed it. That's a full minute now. No, we're not a full minute yet. Yeah, now we are at 36. Yeah, th- this is a disaster. What happened? I don't know. This is throwing my cadence off for the show. <laughs> That smoke detector chirps like our metronome. That's well, how we pace no, ourselves. Should we go right now? About 54 or so, right? Well, we got our last one at 36. Uh-oh. Hold the phone up to the smoke detector, please. Oh, oh there, there it is. Goes. There it goes off. Okay. Okay. Much better. okay. 57. It's, you know, she's moving around the room, I think. It was much more You moving around? I just got up and went across the room. Yeah, yeah. Get, get up next to the smoke detector, please. Okay, I am. Okay. Right. So... This uh, has been chirping. Where is the smoke detector, just for fun, in relation to your bed? Across the room. Across the room. But the room's it's only above, six by six, right? It's above my bedroom door. My bed's across the room. Mm. Okay. How big's the room? Uh, it's a pretty decent size. It's pretty big. Eight oh. feet? <laughs> huh? Eight feet by four feet. Yeah. It's prison cell. Okay, so anyway, what's your question? Okay, I get in a serious relationship with every guy I go out with. Mm-hmm. And no matter how Hold much... On. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Good. Good. We almost missed a chirp there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, go ahead. Um, no matter how much I fall, I fall in love with them very easily. I get very emotionally attached. Mm-hmm. But after a while, I lose interest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it seems like I keep going back to one guy I in see, particular. Is he the guy that won't have anything to do with you? No, I mean, I keep going back to one of my ex-boyfriends. Yeah, but is he the one that's especially rejecting to you? No, he's not, you know, he's always accepting me. I think that's one of the problems. Is he accepting you just for sex, or is he... No, okay. no. I mean, we have a really good emotional bond and really good friendship. Hmm. Hold on one second. We, no, it's, we're about five seconds off. Three, two, one. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's how we amuse ourselves on this show. <laughs> time the chirp. Who wants to play time the chirp? It's uh, it's it's the nation's most boring but game But just show. think of you sleeping in that room. That's I the Chinese. That. No, no. Is it for Adam, I would go be, insane. That'd be the Chinese water torture. Here's how I would sleep in that room. Chirp. One mistake. <laughs> two mistake. I don't even notice it. I know. That's a bad sign. I know. Okay. Well, God bless you. You'd make a great uh, inmate. <laughs> just just block out the world. Yeah. Okay. But um. So um, the. It seems like more and more I I do this with guys. I remind myself of my mother. My mother has been a lesbian for the past four months, with an internet. The chirp drove her to women. True. Why does your being attached to men remind you of your mother's lesbianism? Well, my mother and my father were never married. They had two kids together. They were in an off and on relationship for about. 17, 18 years. Yeah. And Let's just focus on your relationship with Dad and how that must have felt having him constantly sort of coming and going. Um, I, actually, I was really close with my father. And I, I understand. Really, that must have been extra painful then when he took off. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, we only lived with him once, and he was a bad alcoholic, and when my mother got pregnant with my younger sister, he almost pushed out a second-story window. All right. All right. So listen, Stephanie, we, you wasted too much time talking about the smoke detector. <laughs> So we can't focus on your question. I'm sorry. It's okay. But uh, um, maybe some therapies in order here with all um, you've seen and done in your short life. I'm supposed to be having a counselor soon. I'm, That's I'm right. I'm diagnosed with ADHD. Yeah. Don't worry about the ADHD so much. Like, that makes me worry that you have maybe have the alcoholism gene that your dad had. Uh, doesn't the ADHD, doesn't the chirp drive that person more insane or less? Yeah. I think they, mm, good question. Maybe hey, less. Really? Well, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And and lesson doesn't that is that some kind of IQ test? I mean, really that that something you just adjust to and fall asleep with every night? Is there mm -hmm. something going on? I think how many hundreds of our callers we've proven that with? I know, but what is going on in your universe that you can have a box that is uh, six feet away from your head that chirps every forty seconds and you just uh, pull the light? Night, John boy. Night, Grandpa. Boom. Just go right to bed. It just go to bed with a chirping. I mean, here's the thing that's ironic about it. It's supposed to make an annoying chirp that you cannot tolerate so that you change the battery. Like some scientists in Japan sat down and said, what is the, what is the most annoying sound we could make? And as it turns out, kids like it. We have so teenagers kind of who are just sort of reared on the chirp. Yeah, well. Pretty soon, I think they're going to include that in the uh, noisemakers. I think more You go to the sharper image, you get the babbling brook, you get the coastline, you get the windstorm, and you get the Radio Shack smoke detector with the bad 9-volt chirp. Yeah, sure. That's yeah, no, number six. That's like grandma's house. But I think it has more to do with the extreme arousal that people have been through when they've been with the alcoholic parent, the on-again, off-again dad, the abuse, the being pushed out the second star window. So it takes a lot to get them... Can't hear anything. The engine started. You know what I'm All saying? Right. It gets through to them. All right. And their arousal systems have been sort of burnt out, let's say. I like the part where her grandmother... Every, every, once a week comes upstairs and says, that thing is driving me insane. No, 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 it's worse. She goes, you got to get rid of that bird. She thought it was a bird, she said. Did she yeah. think it was a bird? You to ask her. No, she yes. didn't think it was a bird. Stephanie? Stephanie? Yeah. Did your, your grandma thought it was a bird, huh? Yeah, she's like, is there a bird in your room? I'm See? like, no, it's my smoke detector. She's like, well, it's driving me nuts. And I'm like, I'm sorry. You get rid of that bird? But it was driving her nuts for six months, right? Yeah. Why doesn't she change the battery? I don't know. Okay. You sure she got the fact that it was a smoke detector and not a bird? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. You want to go there for uh, Thanksgiving? <laughs> Crazy grandma thinks there's a bird. The red light is going off on your bird. Huh. All right. Let's uh -oh. talk to Samantha. Samantha? Yeah. Hello? You're 23? Yes. Turn your stuff down. I'm sorry, what? Turn all that background noise off. Everybody shut up! <laughs> oh, boy, oh, it's going to be good. What's up? Okay, um, I'm going to be really quiet. Um, for some reason, I can only get off by myself. Mm-hmm. I've been with my boyfriend, and I, I don't know if it's me or him. I don't know. Have you ever had an orgasm during sex? No. That would be normal, right? 
Most women well, don't. Well, I would think. Well, I don't know. Being twenty three, I I don't know. No, most what a, women. What about, what about through oral sex, though? There you go. Most women need oral well, sex. Well, yeah, that. But... All right. Well, that. Oh, really? You get that? That's most women, Samantha. Oh yeah. <laughs> Samantha, you're fine. That's m- normal function. Why not? The other way, though, because that's the way w- many women are put together. They have sex. They have sex orgasms during oral sex, but not during intercourse. That's Listen, normal. we only talked to Samantha for fifty-five seconds. If she'd had the smoke detector going on, we were stretching <laughs> into ten, fifteen minutes. But we just get that question a lot. Yeah, uh, Drew, twenty-three-year-old women mm. should be having orgasms. I'm going to write a percentage. I'm going to write the percentage of women who can't. Have an orgasm through intercourse at age twenty-three. Okay. All right. Now, hold on a second. Hold on. Now, now I'm going to see if we can see if we can match uh, number. He's writing the number down. These, I can't see it. Can cannot have no, got an it. orgasm through intercourse. Through intercourse. Got now, it. now give exact numbers. Don't you know? Don't got it. don't round up. Yeah, got all right. It. Uh, and what other numbers are you going to give me? All right. Hold on. No, that's it. Just that one. Yes. Sixty-five percent. Oh, sixty-five. Yeah. Much lower. I was at eighty percent. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I, I could go with that. You could. I could Why'd go you go with sixty-five then, Jack? But, but I, I, I know you kind of downplay that one. You're always telling me that I'm making too much of that. What do you mean? I, I've, I've never been with a woman who has an orgasm that way. Okay. <laughs> God damn it! I'm always telling what do you. You, mean this? you downplay it. I tell. I you always all the say time. that's normal, and you're like, oh, well, you, blah, blah, blah. You, you sort of. No, you go a little. You go a little ballistic with it sometimes. All right, but eighty percent is a good number. I, two out of ten chicks yeah. at twenty three seems about yeah. seems about right. It's mm-hmm. it's not approaching half. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm. Mm. It gets to it gets to approaching half. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah, when you don't care. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break. We'll be back. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. Let's talk to Drew. Phone number is... Let's get some blood, sweat, and tears. I'd rather you sing to that. All right? It might be coming. All right. Have ready for the birthday show tomorrow. <laughs> Bring in some CDs. Well, maybe to, to, to sort of kick off your birthday around midnight, get something going. You know what I'm saying? I might just... I'm going to make myself a note here, Drew. You like Cat Stevens, right? I could listen to some Cat Stevens, but, uh, you know, it's hard to jam to Cat. You know? I don't like Cat Stevens. It's hard to jam to Cat, you know? Why? Why, why couple, add a couple, couple of strong it's like songs. It's the only music from that era that I can actually tolerate. Oh, oh please. Oh, there's plenty of good oh, stuff. Oh, my God. Plenty of good stuff. You've never heard of Deep Purple. Yeah, come on, Dude, buddy. No. Deep Purple. I mean, I've heard, but no. I was just listening to Highway Star today. <laughs> singing about his car. <laughs> singing about his hair. Singing about his old lady. Guys, that's when bands sung about important stuff. That stuff they were going to do to their car. It's like construction rock. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's all we did all day when we swung the hammer. Listen, a little Deep Purple. Zeppelin. A little Zeppelin. Maybe uh, some Aerosmith, some <laughs> Santana. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know you're getting old, by the way, though, uh, when you're uh, listening to the uh, classic rock station and uh, What I Like About You by The Romantics comes on and you're like, Wait a minute, that's not classic rock. I, I was in high school when that song came. No way. Because you're so used to hearing something from the Allman Brothers or, uh, you know, like uh, Eric Clapton when he was with Derek and the Dominoes or something like that. And then all of a sudden they're playing the Romantics? Listen, Psychedelic Furs are, are classic rock now. That's 20 years ago. I know, but I don't like hearing stuff that I listened to years. when I was in high school in the classic rock right. department. Anything over 15 has got to go into classic rock. What do you say, Anderson? No. Yeah. Classic rock is a genre. It's it's like 38 special and uh, all, you know, Leonard Skinner. Mm. That's classic rock. Yeah. How dare you, Drew. Richard? Yeah. You're 27? Yep. What's up? Uh, I was wondering, I wanted to ask if, uh, if fake boobs can pop. No. Not at you got to put them in a vice. Well, you want to, uh, uh, they have uh, withstand unlimited pressure, I understand, right? Yeah. Really? No, they can. Oh, they can? Yeah. Well, what are you doing to them? <laughs> no, it's just like uh, a lot bigger than, than like she is. They're what? I don't know if I rest my like upper body on them for too long. 
if I don't know if I put too much weight, they'll pop. They feel really weird. And, no, I wouldn't think under sort of normal circumstances you could pop them, right? Oh, okay. I, I was wondering about that. I, actually, I mean, they creep you know, well, try if they creep you out. Try not to put your full body weight on top of them. Ah, uh, like, like if I, let's say there's anything. Let's say uh, let's say you don't like scorpions. Try not to put your full body weight on a scorpion. But I, I can't imagine that was the bre- the best job, best cosmetic job. If you he freak them, me out, yeah, they feel, feel so funny that they're bothering him. That's awful. Yeah, I think there's going to be a little boob backlash coming here soon. I yeah, think it's I already think we're begun. In it. Yeah, we're in it. I'd like to talk to uh, Dr. Marcel about uh, how things have dropped off, mm. and I think it's probably time for whoever's doing these procedures and whatever materials they're using. It's time for the next evolution. You know what I mean? Back to the silicone. boobs we're looking at today. Where those were your grandma's boobs? Mm-hmm. I'm, I want to see what the next evolution is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't know how what it's going to be. I mean, in terms of what they look like, or the approach, or the wow. materials, or all that. It's got to be. We got to begin to the point pretty soon where you cannot tell, mm. and it's still pretty obvious when someone has, has had a boob job. With Rosa Blasi in here last week. Yeah, couldn't well, tell. She had a good looking boob job. I couldn't tell. Yeah, but I wasn't sucking on them or flogging them with yeah, my but you penis. You were looking at those pictures. I mean, in my mind, I was. Uh. But yeah, okay, well, good enough. Well, you know why? Mm. Because she had a full rack to begin with, and she sort of filled it out, or she changed the shape, mm. but the uh, the bones were there. <clears throat> Alex? Hi. Um, thanks for taking my call, you guys. Hey, thanks for calling the show. Thanks. Uh, happy early birthday, Adam. Thanks. Um, let's see. I've been with my boyfriend for about seven months, and we're really comfortable with each other, but it's been within the past like month, month and a half, that... Every time we have sex during and after, uh, I queef. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and, you know, yeah, we're comfortable with each other, but still it's embarrassing. Mm-hmm. And so I'm wondering how I can stop that, mm-hmm. if I can. Mm-hmm. It, you know, and it's, it's like I'm, I'm squeezing tight and trying not to let the air in, but it still happens. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can you excuse yourself afterwards and sort of I let it d- I do, but I'm wondering if there's just something I can do to stop that. It's usually positional, so you can kind of monkey around with positions. Okay. Yeah. But is, is moisture? What about moisture? Is that the friend of the queef or the foe of the queef? Um, uh, I don't know. I it, don't think it really has anything to do with it's, it. It's the friend. Yeah, I guess. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's it's good for it. Yeah. yeah. And should uh, should friend and foe sound so much alike? Uh, and should uh, cheer and know, cheer push and pull and push and pull? We really need to make those almost the same word. Mm. Okay. Uh-huh. Anyway, hey, uh, yeah, it's good times. So, so it's more like a positional thing then. But it bothers you, but not him. Yeah, I mean, he's cool with it, but still, I just you know, it do, kind of... do you think he's uncomfortable and just not telling you? Um. Uh, maybe. No, no, I mean, he, he's cool. Let, let us reassure you. Doesn't bother him. He's not uncomfortable, but there is that thing where anytime something happens that two people notice, it's like when one, one guy farts in the elevator, the door opens, the other guy gets in. Right. Both people want to say something. There's a weird silence. Yeah. It's a little uncomfortable. Well, because it, he knows it bothers her. Yeah. If it didn't bother her, he, would, yeah, he wouldn't even notice weird. it. Now, it, it only happens when you're having intercourse. It doesn't happen after he withdraws and... Heads to the bathroom. Um. Yeah, it happens then too. It's like, yeah, I just that's it when out. it gets funny. But that, <laughs> that's the comedy. I know. I know. That's all right. But that's when she can dismiss herself and yeah, you know, that's just you. Okay. And um, then really quickly. Um, well, let me ask you something, Drew. Once in a while, for, for gas, I'll do the cheek spread. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you don't get that. You don't get that flesh on flesh flap. You know. So maybe if she spread herself. Once in a while, out. You, yeah. Like once in a while, you get that cheek. You do that cheek pull, and it's like. So she can try going with it a little more, as opposed to fighting it. I'm saying if you take the vagina yeah, and you squinch it. it down the other way, like one of those old pl- rubber plastic change purses, mm-hmm. you know, you push it in that way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Might you get a little less flap? You might. Why don't you try that, Alex? <laughs> and what was the other really quick thing? Okay. Um, uh, well, let's see. I went to the gynecologist a couple weeks ago, and um, my results to my pap smear came back abnormal. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I went back in and had some sort of procedure. I don't remember exactly what it was called. 
something oscopy. Colposcopy. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm wondering just how, uh, how common is it for those results to come back abnormal? Because I kind of got freaked out. Very, very common. It usually means wart virus. And okay. it's something that needs to be sort of checked regularly and make sure it doesn't transform into cervical cancer. All right. Well, good times. When we come back, we'll speak to uh, Chris. He's no, a female. No, no, no. no? Why? That's too, too, that was a quick one I was trying to get in. I like Chris. No, I'm talking about Chris. Oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. Go ahead. Yeah, I like that call. Okay. So that, that's that follow-up to the girl yeah. that was dating a 400-pound guy or had a crush on a 400-pound guy. Right, got it. And uh, we'll get to that after this. Line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. All righty. Now we're going to follow up on a call we got, I think, two weeks ago. It's uh, Chris, who's a female. She has a friend who's a big man, 400 pounds plus, and uh, she's into him. She's and in love with best him. friends. Yeah. She's in love with him, and he was in love with her, but she wasn't going to get started on anything unless he started to lose some pounds. Yeah, she couldn't get over it. And uh, and she shouldn't have to. That's uh, that's enough. Four hundred pounds is a big enough mountain to get over. I'm fine with that. Last time we spoke to her, we said, "Look, just tell them straight out. Hey, I love you, and I worry about your health, and I want to start a relationship. But I'm not going to start a relationship with the guy who can't make it up a flight of stairs. You start working on your weight. We'll begin the relationship." But I was saying that I felt that he that weight was there for a reason, to keep away intimacy, and so he's going to find a reason to sabotage this. Interesting point. Now, I think that's more true with women, though, when they balloon up, isn't it? Yeah, but that's guys up to about 300. But 400, now you're They're into the... Trying to, keep, yeah. trying to keep people away? Yeah. Hi, Chris, guys. what's happening? Yes, I did exactly what you suggested. I sat down and I did talk to my friend. Mm -hmm. We got down to the weight issue. Mm -hmm. And we did decide exactly as Dr. Drew said that there was an underlying issue that he doesn't necessarily know of now. Mm -hmm. But we did actually get to the point where he is willing to talk to you guys and maybe just give him a little more motivation, maybe just talk to him a little more about what's going on with him. Is he there now? He is right here. And what's his name? His name is Tom. Tom. All Can right. I give the phone to him? Yeah, but wait a minute. Let me ask you something, Chris. Okay. When you asked, when you said to him, well, how much more motivation does he need other than he might get laid for the first time in five years? And, he, and a woman he's in love with is going to have a potential relationship with him. Like, how, why, why does he need to be motivated by us? I think it's just because you guys are an outside source. It's a third party that doesn't have an emotional thing into this. Someone oh. who can actually give him some really good insight into it. Uh, uh, all right. But at 400, you know, when you're morbidly obese at age 20-something. He's you, 33. 33. You have to lose weight, whether you talk to me or Drew or you or anybody. Right? It's there is a lot of emotional things going on. All right, pass the phone off. You bore me. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, baby. It's just he's... I'm kidding, doll. Okay. Give the phone over, Chubby Chaser. Okay, here we go. Let me let you talk to Tom. All right. Here you go. Hi guys. What's happening, Tom? You're overweight. Oh, true. You're please, fat. please, true. We know. Right. Right. Thank you for so speaking so do, so to us. So do a lot of people. So listen, Tom. Yeah. Uh, so, as you know, we spoke to Chris a couple of weeks ago. Right, She right. basically uh, confessed her love for you. And uh, once wait, you... Wait, wait, do, do you know that? Yes. Okay. She, 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 yes, I do. Now, didn't you uh, have a crush on her as well? Oh, very much so. Okay. So, now, Drew has a theory about people when they really put weight on that oftentimes they do it to keep themselves away from a relationship. It's sort of like women who date guys who are in prison. <laughs> it's the male version of that. Right. Is, well, it, is there a component at work with you, Tom? I, would, I mean, in this particular relationship, I would say that I haven't put on any... Uh, I would say I'm pretty, you know, the same size I was when I met her. I wouldn't say that I'd put any weight on since I met Chris. Yeah, but just in general, not for Chris, but in general, do you find that you... Do you think that there's any truth for you... And that your your weight is a way to keep people away from you. 
Not not ju- not just in a, a romantic sense and just in general. No, you're saying- no, in a romantic sense, but not just as it pertains to Chris. I just mean in general. I, I would say I've been overweight my whole life. Mm-hmm. I mean, even before I got into girls. Mm. And so I, I I would. I'm not dismissing that, but right. I'm not. Right. I don't see that too much. Okay, now what uh, are, you, are your parents overweight? No, no one in my family is. No one in your family, but you're overweight your whole life. Yes, and you weren't sexually abused. <laughs> Not that I know of. Hmm. Hmm. How's your mom? Domineering. I have issues with my mom. I do. <laughs> I know that's so like textbook, but yeah. uh, okay. I I do. I I love her very much, but I do. I think. Uh, I feel like I, I don't live up to what she wants me to be uh-huh. a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. What do you have brothers? Other brothers? I have a brother, yep. What's his deal? What's he doing? He's actually pretty successful. Uh-huh. He, uh, he's, he's seven years younger than me. You have any he's, problem uh, in relationships? I'm sorry, what? Does he have any problems in relationships? He, yeah, you know, he's not real successful in that department either. All right. Um, what about guys? You ever think about guys? No, I, no, no, but mm. I have had people, like, ask me that, mm-hmm. uh, but no, not at all. You're gay. All right, true, please. <laughs> now, so, so Chris, here's what we're going to need you to do. Oh, wait, do you need to talk to Chris? No, I'm sorry, Tom. Okay. Here's what we need you to do. Okay. Uh, we need you to begin losing weight, not only for your health, but uh, for Chris's health, so you don't crush her when you're uh, <laughs> doing a reverse uh, cowgirl. Okay? Well, that, I mean... Of course, that's, I mean, to me, that sounds easier said than done. Why? Because, I, I mean, I've, tr- you know, I mean, I've tried, and I, I'm... Well, what, what are you what doing? About, what, what are you currently doing? Well, about it right now. Well, I, I don't mean... I'm like some serious-ass denial about it, and, uh, you know, kind of putting my head in the sand and pretending that it hasn't been a problem. Why not some, uh, there was some very fine surgical interventions for this? That's actually what Chris and I were talking about yeah. tonight, the, uh, yeah. the stomach stapling. There's, there are various things that can be done. You can look into it. Um, there's there's banding and stapling and well, reconnecting. I guess I guess the thing to do would be to look into you know like all of, you know get get information on that get as much uh, yeah. maybe yeah. some consultations even on that yeah well and, um, Tom I, here, I, really, I, I would love to okay so look here's all Chris wants to know Chris wants to know is uh, are you going to start putting forth an effort in the weight loss department so that you guys can have a relationship absolutely all you right. are well, there you go all right. That's all. That's all we were looking for was just a sort of a yeah. willingness. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I feel like um, you know we've been talking about this for about the last week, and she's she's really great the way. I mean, she if she'd come at me, you know, full bore with this, I mean, my my shields would have gone up. And uh, yeah. Uh, but you know, she she's been great about it, mm-hmm. and I, I really do believe that she loves me. Yeah. And um, big fan. You guys, uh, you guys uh, getting intimate yet? Not, I mean, little, little bit. But handy, no. handy. I got you. I hear you. <laughs> What'd you say? All right. No, that's good. So, All right. So that's good. Yeah. That's, that's going along fine. Yeah. He worries me a little bit. Yeah, he's pretty angry at women. Or his mom, anyway. Yeah, and there seems to be a part where, there's a part of him that's saying, hey, I'm 33, I'm 400 pounds, and uh, hey, what do you want me to do with the weight? Well, he's, res- he's a resistance. He even alluded to it when he talked about if she had come on a little bit aggressively, he would put shields up. You know, he can't tell me what to do. I'm defending myself. That's why his whole body is a big defensive shield. Yeah. All right. True. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we have no idea what time it is because the board's out here. So we clock's keep, out. Yeah. We keep going well, back. actually, I have a watch. That's Drew. why that thing is. Uh, oh, I see. Going. You got a light going off. Yeah. yeah, I got my watch, Drew. Yeah. I got an adult. Right. I'm going to look at it. Charles? Yeah. You're 20? Yeah. What's up? Man, there's a bunch of s*** over. Oh, good night. <laughs> you can't reset because uh, our board's <clears throat> out, Anderson. Charles, I... Uh, it's funny, Charles I didn't like for the first uh, half syllable. <laughs> I know. Normally it takes a full syllable for me to hate uh, some of our callers. Charles I didn't like in the first... E- yeah, I was like, no, Drew didn't use the S word. Calm no, down, Anderson. No. I just like those guys. You have to sort of. It's like uh, 
You know what it is? It's as if they uh, fell asleep in a drunk tank and you're poking them with a mop handle now through the bars. Hey, boy, get up, huh? Yeah. That, that's what I say. E. His question is, his uh, wife hasn't had sex with him in five months. I'm surprised it hasn't been longer. Hmm. It seems light, doesn't it, Jerome? Yeah. I'm surprised he, she's had sex with him. She had had. Marcy? Marcy. Marcy's uh, 17. Marcy is uh, not with us. Oh, oh, she, oh, there she is. There she is. Marcy? Yeah? What's up? Um, I was just wondering if um, you could get a bladder infection from having sex too much. And you can get uh, bladder infections from having any sex. Oh, uh, really? Women way more than men, and it's very common. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. yeah. There's a couple uh, things. Really? Oh, really? Oh, oh, really? Yes, you can. Uh, there's a couple things. One is it's a serious thing you need to get treated because the infection can get into your kidneys and be very serious there. Mm -hmm. Secondly, just because it hurts when you pee, it's hard for you to tell whether it's a bladder infection or a sexually transmitted disease because both can have similar symptoms. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So what what you what else are you doing but beside talking to us? What are you watching on TV? Um, just listening to you guys on the radio and sitting in the car. Oh, that's us. Yeah. With um my boyfriend and this other guy. Okay, baby doll. Well you gotta turn that down, you know. It's hard to focus. Turn down. And here's <laughs> here's the whole thing too. Hey, if you guys could fool me by not acting half retarded while you listen to yourself on an eight second delay come through some speakers, I'd be fine with you doing it. Like anybody who can hear hear themselves come through a speaker on an eight second delay and carry on a coherent conversation with us, I'm fine with that person. Mm -hmm. But you're clearly distracted. That's why we bring it up. I always like that. That's like when Drew uh once in a while, Drew, uh, I'll notice Drew hasn't uh, said anything for 10 minutes. I look at him, and he's he's uh, he's doing some reading. He's going through his pager. He's doing whatever. He's working on his novel. Attending and, to his dogs. And he's attending to his dogs. And I say, uh, Drew, why don't you put that down? It's distracting. You're like, I'm listening. I'm, I'm working. I hear everything. You know, it's not fair. People, no matter how distracted they are, can parrot back what you say. Mm-hmm. I do that. The rep repetition is different than spontaneous speech. Yeah. It's a different mechanism. I know. No, I, I do it all the time. It's a, all the, my wife always says it. It's like, you aren't listening. Uh, listen, <sighs> Julie thinks she's the queen of the office. <laughs> Sarah is nice but can turn on you and think she's also the queen of the office. And I can I can say verbatim everything she said for the last ten minutes. Yeah. It's a great gift. Hey, speaking of novel, uh, I haven't talked about my book in a while. Oh yes, you have. You've talked. We've changed the title from old, uh, "Utter Hell" to "Cracked." It's not coming out for a while. It's coming out about what are we? May, June, or three months. Three months. Yeah, but I've got, the, I've got to get the final manuscript in like in twenty four hours. Yeah, but you can't start final, plugging final, something final. that's not coming out for three months. You tell the talking about it's a good book. I know it's a good book. I know you say it's a good book. <laughs> you need. Would you read it? No. You Will could you read, read it to me. Would you read it to me? I'll tell you what we'll do. Mm -hmm. You can read me... Excerpts here on the radio every night? You can read me 10 pages a day, but you got to squeeze it in uh, between 9.58 and whenever the show starts. And you'll sit and listen. I'll sit and listen as fast as you can read. All right. And we'll get through the book in, 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 in a few that. months, all right? All right. All right. But here's the thing, Drew. Don't start plugging the book until the book comes out. I want there to be... It's a good book. There's a buzz. There's a big buzz. It's already a buzz. It's too much buzz. <laughs> <laughs> you got to calm this buzz down a little. It's, yeah. it's, it's gonna, you're going to get a buzz backlash. Do you, do you see Spinal Tap? Do you see the movie Spinal Tap? Yeah, too much hype. Yeah, oversaturation. Hmm. Oversaturation. And Boston's not a big college town anyway. Hmm. Roger? Hey. You're uh, 13? How's it going? You're calling from North Hollywood? Yeah. Where do you live? Um, off of Kittredge and Tonga. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Don't you love it? That's North Hollywood, baby doll. Yeah. Bad times. Awesome. Go ahead. You, yeah. Wait, what What? High, what junior high you go to? I go to St. Patrick's. Mm. Yeah. You go, you're going to be going to North Hollywood High soon? No, I'm going to Cleveland in Reseda. Mm. Why? You guys moving? No, I'm just taking the bus. It's, uh, I heard it's pretty good school. You don't want to take a bus from a North Hollywood to Cleveland. You might as well just go fly to Cleveland. Reseda, <laughs> Reseda. I know, I know, but it's Cleveland High. Uh oh. Hey, oh. Cleveland High is way out there. Yeah. Yeah, that's stupid. Don't do that. Okay. All right, go ahead. 
Um, I just want to know, what are the symptoms for mono? High fever, huh? sore throat, mm -hmm. prostration. You're, just, you're out. You're down. Okay. That's, all right. Prostration for, for, means that you're knocked down. You're knocked you can't move too it. good. Yeah, I know, I know. Doesn't mean a, shut up. Doesn't Adam, mean Adam sleep, doesn't. though, does it? No. Well, Prostrate it. means laid out. Okay. All right, and um, also, uh, I just want to say happy birthday, Adam. Thanks, buddy, but it's, it's not till tomorrow. No, I know, I know what I'm saying. It's not for, not for another hour, so. Yeah, that's true. So. If I forgot a clock, I could tell you when it was. Because I'm not calling tomorrow, because, um, well. Yeah, you'll be on a bus to Cleveland. Most likely, in all probability. All right, don't do it. I'm telling okay, you. And, uh, you, you. Wait, you're advising somebody to go to North Hollywood High? Are you high? Here's, what, here's the thing. I took a bus to Cleveland from North Hollywood High to play football game when I was in high school. And Cleveland, I mean, North Hollywood High is closer to Cleveland High than, than, it, where, than where he lives. Uh. And it took a long time. Uh. And bus drivers drag ass. <laughs> you got to pick people up. You're literally, if you got an 8, 8 o'clock class, the bus going to be picking you up at 615. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's going to suck. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, well, what can I do? You, Anything you can, to you, avoid North well, Hollywood High. You can do. You can go to the high school that's up the street. That's true, though. You don't want to go north. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go north. Right, smart. smart. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Drew, your kids go to the school you want to, right? Mm -hmm. And it's all the way, it's K through high school. Mm -hmm. The same school. Mm. That just Pre K is, through high school. <laughs> Pre K through high school is, you know, that's four schools for normal people. Yeah. That's unbelievable. That is, I, I, it's, it's probably good and, and bad at the same yes, time. that's exactly right. Stacy, I mean, probably more good than bad. Stacy, you're 23. Yes. Hey, guys, how you doing? What's happening? We're good. I have a question about my mom and my grandma and my aunt. Mm -hmm. My mom, for at least the past 12 years, has been hooked on prescription medication. Which meds? Um, she's taken a lot of them. She's taken, her doctor has given her methadone. Is she on methadone now? Uh, she has been in like the past four months. Methadone for the uh, last four months. What else? Uh, Oxycontin, mm -hmm. Oxycodone. Well, what, what is she on now? What is she on now? I don't know exactly what she's taking now, but she takes whatever she has. She's had all, she's probably had about 20 different pain medications. All right. Um, um, take Xanax. All right. Um, what, what's, I, just anything. What's the question? Um, my aunt and my grandma want to get a court order um, to say that she's incapable to have her put into rehab, and they're wanting me to help. And I don't. Wait, wait. wait. They want to get a court order to put her into treatment. Yes. I doubt you're going to get that. Really. Yeah. When do they grant that kind of I, stuff? I've never listen. I've been in the field for many over ten years. I've never seen that. You, you are. It's not against the law or against your rights to get loaded in the state of California, even to the point of killing yourself. Okay. You can't intentionally kill yourself, but it's not against the law to accidentally kill yourself doing drugs. What is that? Uh, Isn't that crazy? Well, I. Yeah. Or you I, can destroy your life, destroy other people's lives, and die, and that's okay. But you can't okay. smoke pot. I, yeah. I know there's this weird thing where like. We can't tell somebody what to do. Yeah. Really? That's all you guys do. I know. I mean, maybe you only focus on the chicken-ass stuff, like uh, the guy's got too dark a tint on his window. That stuff, you have no difficulty telling us what to do. It's really a horrible situation because these people have life-threatening illnesses. For if we could tell them, if we could control them for 30 days, we could turn their lives around. All yeah. we got to do is be able to contain them for a short period of time to, well, until their brain settles down and ch changes. So what's Stacy's next choice? Um, create other consequences. Gun? No, she, Stacey, she doesn't care. Create other consequences. You have what, to about be, it? what about an intervention? You can do it. That's what I'm saying. Do an intervention. That's very costly, though. But you could e just... G what your mom has to know is that important people in her lives will not have anything to do with oh, her. But she's so change. high. Who's she, what's she Yeah, care? but that's about the only thing that does get through to people that are high like that is, is loss. Why is the intervention loss. so expensive? Because mm, the guy that guys that do it are very specialized and they, they fly to wherever you are. Ah, and do that. That. You get a, go with a local boy. <laughs> there may be some local people and basically would make sure that there's a, it's scripted, rehearsed, and it's, ah. and it's an ambush. You have to, it has to be an ambush. And you have to, when you do ambush them, be very clear with them and with yourself, that if they do not go to treatment, you're done with them. Scripted that's, that's, and rehearsed. Yeah. That is the message, though, which is, which is if you don't get treatment, 
we will not be a part of your life anymore. You, and you have to be prepared to check out. That's it. Cue cards or teleprompter? Um, a written script. Oh, yeah, work off a script? Yeah. Because I'd be like... <laughs> like, I know you need a prompter. It'd be like, uh, cards, John, cards. your 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 drinking and drug abuse is tearing this fan. I'd be, like, I'm sorry. What pay? What? Uh, no. What page are we on? I've seen the way you you yell at the card guys. What? I I'm not. I can't read that. What page are, are you we high? on? All right. Right. Yeah. No, I say you're. I'm saving you from yourself. Mm -hmm. All right. Where are we taking a break now? Not around one o'clock. According to my watch, Drew. I guess we are. Yeah. You know what, guys? I don't like. I don't like the guys who wear their watch on the inside. You know that guy? Remember Craig used to have the stick-on watch? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we work with a guy who had a stick-on watch. I'm talking about a regular watch with no band. Just plain old watch, no band. didn't say stick-on watch. It was just a watch. He stuck on with surgical tape. Every uh, He was a producer, stage, stage producer, stage... What the manager, hell was he? Stage, stage manager, manager for uh, Loveline. He would always stick it on, and some people would notice he didn't have a wristband, and others wouldn't, but he would never tell you how it was on there, and he seemed to enjoy it, and it, eventually it angered me <laughs> that he, he took a certain joy in not telling anybody. Gay. But no. uh, It was a Three Stooges watch. Okay. Yeah. We'll uh, take ourselves a quick break. We'll be right back. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. I was uh, sitting home watching my uh, home improvement shows that I do uh, every night. Mm -hmm. I sit around and uh, watch all these shows on these uh, gardening channels, and uh, they had a commercial for uh, Craftsman Tools, and uh, there was a guy. It's there was a blind craftsman. Wait a minute. Yeah, the guy How does was that blind. work? He's a blind furniture maker. Oh my god! He, what is this a comment? Was the furniture look like? Uh, modern, modern sculpture. <laughs> it's supposed to be an armoire, though. <laughs> no, it's it, it's uh, it looked pretty good. It made me really wonder: Did the blind guy really build it? And uh, and was he blind or visually challenged? No, he's blind. Right. He it was like Bob Johnson, blind. Craftsman tool user since 1992, and he was uh, doing his thing, talking about the precision and how you know he's from feeling the wood and stuff. But uh, I'll tell you, uh, shutting your eyes and working power equipment uh, stuff with uh, carbide oh tip blades on it seemed like a bad idea. But the the part the part about the commercial I was most I was immediately intrigued. As soon yeah. as I saw the blind guy was building something, I was going nuts. But then uh, when he put on the shop goggles, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Before he fired up the 10-inch uh, chop saw, he put on the safety goggles, and I thought, hey, I have 20-20 vision. I've almost never put on a pair of protective goggles in the 20 years I did been doing this. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, number two, he's, you don't have much to lose when you're blind. Yeah. You're not suing what you, anybody. What are you protecting there? Uh, I suppose you might get some kind of infection, but... It was funny because but it, it I was might thinking, be, look better to enucleate them and just put some glass things in there. I was thinking that they're making the uh, during the making of the commercial. They're like, well, we have to have the guy don the shop goggles if and he's going to fire up the router. Is it OSHA? Yeah, but then on the other hand, it's like, does the blind guy really need to sport the goggles? And they're clear ones too. They they should just been blacked out. He should just strapped a bra around his around his face or something. Anyway, that was. Uh, if I was blind, I would walk. You know, I would have I would have an oven mitten in front of my face with just duct tape going around my head. We walk around, and people think it's amazing. <laughs> they wouldn't think I was blind. They'd say this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, oven mitten and duct tape holding on. He's negotiating curbs and 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 stop lights. He's getting onto the bus. He's moving around. Uh -huh. Blind guys, yeah, they just go to work and stuff. You yeah. know, they just uh, they keep going. Yeah, I grew up with uh, Bob Ringwald, the uh, Ringwald fan, Molly Ringwald's dad, totally blind. Really? He'd just leave the house the morning and start walking down the street. Hmm. So where are you going, Bob? I'm going to grab the bus, going to the Van Nuys Courthouse. Where are you going? Just heading up to Chandler. Three or four city blocks. Just chugging down the sidewalk. I just wait at the bus stop, hop on the bus, takes me down to uh, Kester, get off there, go to the Van Nuys, make my way down. It's like, I, I got perfect eyesight. I'm scared to ride the bus. They just leave the house, got that stick going in front of them. I don't know. I don't like that. That's showing off. <laughs> I don't need that.
I have difficulty doing that. I don't like when blind people do stuff I can't do. Huh. This guy built a very nice piece of furniture, much nicer than I could build. I don't need him rubbing it in my face. Sarah? Uh, yeah, hi. You're 18? Mm-hmm. What's up? Um, happy birthday, Adam. It's not till tomorrow, baby doll. I know, but I just want to say happy birthday anyway. Well, thanks. Um, hi, Drew. Anyway. Hi, Lindsay. Um, oh, Sarah, beg your pardon. Yeah, um, okay, I, about a month ago, went to the doctors, and I already knew that I had HPV, because when I was 16, I found out that I did. Mm -hmm. um, How did you find out you had that? I actually, um, one day, I was putting lotion on, and I felt something on my back, upper thigh, and it was a wart. So you have warts <laughs> on your thighs? Like a... The only way that I could describe it is a wart. It was skin tone. It didn't have anything oozing from it. It wasn't painful. It was just kind of... Right. Dark. Warts are never painful, never oozing. They're just warts. But they're but human papillomavirus occur on the genitalia, not on the thigh. Well, it wasn't... It was... Well, that close was the to source the thigh, of the leak. I guess you could say really close to the thigh. But in that area, I would call it kind of my thigh slash yeah. butt area. But it was... How do you know it wasn't just a skin tag? Um, well, another doctor saw it recently, and she said, oh, it looks like a skin tag. But I had a doctor before burn whatever it was, ice it off, basically. But I went back, and then my pap smear came back recently, and it was abnormal. And it says, um, well, this Friday I have an appointment. I have to go in, and on my cervix, they want to see, they want to do a calposcopy to see mm -hmm. how much of it has gone to my cervix. Well, no, it's always on your cervix. That's, always that's on. Where, yeah, that's where it goes. It, that, that thing you first had was probably a skin tag and not HPV. And HPV is infects nearly half people your age. It's very common. Yeah. You live in San Francisco. It's extremely common. Wow. A certain percentage of HPV will persist, and that persistent virus is the one that tends to turn into the cervical cancer. Well, but you but, wouldn't get the warts on your thigh, the no. inner thigh. Mm. I mean, how far from the vagina would HPV ever stray? Here's the deal. Skin tag, she's describing a skin tag. Well, she's also describing a wart. Mm, the warts usually occur on the lips, and then they'll spread to the thighs, but they won't start on the thigh. You know well, what I mean? That, but, but that's what I'm saying. You're, 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 not, you're saying she's describing a skin tag just by virtue of the fact that it's not on the vagina. No, by virtue of the fact that it's isolated, it's one, and it's in the place that skin tags always occur. Crease. And the warts, they kind of make their way out. They kind of, they kind of cluster out, you Ooh. know what I mean, kind of thing. Well, this, was, this one was uh, by itself. Solo? Yeah, it was, and it. Um, I have not had any more of them. I've never had a wart. I've never. All right. Anyway, so Fine, so you need to get colposcopy, you need to get regular pap smears, you need to have these things very carefully followed up, and uh, we'll see whether this is the one that uh, risks for cervical cancer. If you stay on top of it, it should be fine. Uh, Michelle? Hello? What's up? Woo. Hi. Hey, baby doll. Um, actually, I've been listening for quite some time, and I'm sure you guys realize that part of the reason everyone listens is because of you guys also. Thank and you. And you guys never yeah. really talk about yourselves too much about anything like what you do, like when you're not on the show or anything. I was just kind of wondering. Jesus. Like, what guys, the like, hell is she talking that's about? That's all I talk that's about. That's all Adam talks about. <laughs> well, you talk about high school. He never talks about what he does now. Oh, well, I do a lot of complaining, but, uh, you know, it doesn't, not necessarily about my schedule. Well, well, I meant, like, do you guys, like, sports? Or, like, what do you guys do? Okay, well, Drew, uh, I practice very medicine. quickly, go through your day. I'll give you, uh, I'll give you, we'll both take uh, 60 seconds. What time do you wake up? I wake up at 6.30, make my kids breakfast, take them to school, go to the, do rounds of the Why medic. do you got to make them breakfast? Because I'm up and doing it. I like doing it. I go to the medical hospital. What do you make them? Mm, cereal or eggs, whatever they want. Make them cereal. That's not Well, they, they want cereal more than, I offer them eggs every uh, morning. Uh, 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 they'd, have, they'd have bacon if I made that, but I'm not going to make that, man. Okay. Uh, bad for me. Take them to school. Go to the medical hospital. Uh, then either go to Los Encinas, the psychiatric chemical dependency unit, or go to my office, mm -hmm. and then go to the chemical dependency unit. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm there for treatment teams and lectures and administrative things. It, each day is a little bit different, but I'm basically busy till late afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then uh, go home what time? Depends on the day. I mean, All sometimes right. I, go, like, I try to go at 3 or 4 in the afternoon and work out. Three or four, work out. Yeah. Then you're uh, you're in for the day. Then I deal with the kids and deal with the kids. Baseball R practice, writing on little the book, league, little, little league, league. Write on the book. I'm writing a book that I finished, cracked. Be out in August. six months. I'm so excited about that. Kind All right, of relax. Thing. And uh, then what? That's that's nap and a jack. Nap what do you got? Yeah. Bang well, the Jesus out of the au pair. Mm -hmm. no, beat no, the crap out of the dogs. Yell at the gardener, and then what? Mop yeah. up for the old lady gets home. Yeah, right, right about then. Now uh, then, eat dinner with the family. Mm -hmm. Watch a little TV. Uh, again, usually read. Read. Or, or, and then uh, do the homework. 
Do your homework. Do the kids' homework. Do it with, for them. Work with them, and then they come out here. Really? You work with your kids and doing their homework? Every night. Every Pretty night. Much every night yeah. Jesus, F. Wow. Holy Christ. Uh, did Miss Mama Pinsky put her little pinky in Dr. Drew's little dump? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Whoa. David Allen Greer's way out of line. So, Michelle, what did you think I did all day? Well, I know you guys work, or I'm sure, I know you work all day at least, and then do Love Line. And then I knew you're in internal medicine, right? Yeah. She's on and also, Internal medicine. Oh, yeah. I'm really interested in psychiatry, and I wanted to be a psychiatrist, and I was wondering how you got into the whole radio psychiatry thing. Uh, Lou, the program director. Total accident some 20 years ago, just when I was in medical school, someone asked me to help out on something, and they kind of, I thought I was doing community service, basically, and so for 10 years, I did it for nothing. I thought it was interesting and uh, helpful, and then it became this thing. Well, what do you do when you, uh, when you get home after this show, Drew? I'm asleep by, I'm asleep by 12.38. Really? Asleep. It, I've never seen 1245. Really? That yeah. is such prime time. Yeah. That's your time. No. Why? No, that's my time. I got, that's it. I got to get up don't at 630. Don't you want a couple? Yeah, you, get up. you don't have to get up at 630 every morning. I know, you can sleep in a little sometimes. I do once a week but, sometimes. All right. But don't you want some time to just unwind? Uh, your time. No? I'm so desperate to go to sleep by then. I can't wait to go really? to sleep. Really? Yeah. I hate going to sleep. Yeah, see. I have to force I sleep myself well, to go to sleep. sleep well, how about Adam? Wait, Michelle. Hang on. Something, Michelle. Well, actually, I have one more question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, heard, I was talking to a medical doctor about medical marijuana, and he mentioned something about cannoids or cannabinoids that are receptors in your brain that, like, um, the, yeah. can, or the chemicals in cannabis attach to and can help things. Well, it doesn't help things. It, it has, it's called the anandamide system. If you want to look it up in the way, it's anandamide from the term ananda, meaning bliss. It's a Sanskrit word. And the anandamide system, the anandamide receptors, are present throughout the animal kingdom. They're even in mollusks and, uh, you know, lower life forms. And it's a neuromodulatory receptor. We don't know that it helps anything yet. But they, presumably something they, as widespread as that may have some therapeutic value they, to research it. Do they exist in the people who don't change the battery in their smoke detector the, for six interestingly, months? Interestingly, the anandamide... <laughs> no, listen, no, no, it's interesting. And the anandamide is very powerfully affected in the amygdala, which is a part of the brain that not, monitors for novelty. Hmm. So the things that detects changes in the environment, and theirs appear to be kind of blocked out, right? You've got a hypervigilant amygdala, right? Yes. Every little thing you... Yes, I do. Well, wait, tell Michelle what you do. Oh, okay. Hey, uh, Michelle... Yeah. All right, I'll put you on all day. What I do, you can just listen. Uh, yeah, my scary, scary. My schedule uh, varies. I, I get up pretty early now. I go to bed. Uh, I'll get to the end of the day. I get up probably about eight or eight thirty because I'm working on a house, and I show up at the house, and there's uh, seven or eight guys who uh, I've worked with on other houses working there, and I walk around and I yell at everybody, and I yell, "This isn't what we were talking about." And then I walk through the guy's house with the head guy, and I tell him what I want. And then I pick up a hammer and swing it a little myself. And it usually gets me through to about 11 o'clock. And then 11 in the morning, I head down to uh, Jimmy Kimmel's show, uh, frantically comb through the USA Today, find some uh, talking points, things Jimmy might want to talk about uh, on that evening show, sit down for a writer's lunch with about eight or ten other guys, go through one at a time, all our talking points, uh, do that, break, af break at that about two, and then I usually uh, run over to the uh, back to the house and uh, yell, uh, why didn't you do what I told you to do last <laughs> time I was here? And then, yes? You and I both do something that's hard to explain with meetings. Yeah, you, you, know you, you have these meetings. little meetings every once in a while and talk to a lot of people on the cell phones and all that kind of Which junk. Which is sort of future things that you might want to be participating yeah, in. Yeah, so. lunch is about nothing that'll ever happen. And I run up the house, yell at everybody, line everybody out on what's going on the next day, and then I run back down the hill to Jimmy's uh, office again. And now Jimmy has decided what all his talking points are going to be for that evening, mm. and now it's time to write jokes for those talking points. So mm. uh, sit there and write jokes. So and go back to write the jokes. Go back to write the jokes, because huh. he hears all the talking, the ideas, well, you could bring this up, you could bring that up. He decides. So on and so forth. Right. During uh, Then he decides what he wants to talk about, then he gives everyone a list of like 10 things he might want to talk about, then you sit there and write tons of jokes for that stuff, and turn all that in by like 6, 6.30 in the evening. Then uh, I go home. Now it's nap time. Mm. Oh, yeah. But I bed down for about, uh, my naps have been short, 30, 35 minutes, something like that. Then uh, skip some rope, usually. No, then I eat, 
Then I skip rope. Then the uh, old lady uh, comes home from work, and I uh, tell her to talk to me whilst I skip rope because I get bored. <laughs> so I just skip rope and talk to her, and it's uh, funny because it's in this uh, syncopated pa- pattern. You know, it's like, how was work today? <laughs> Good. I am fine. Jimmy's was fun. Not last night, but the night before. And uh, then I take a shower about uh, 9.25 and uh, scoot off to work. Come home about uh, 12.30, a couple glasses of wine. Oh, boy. Watch a, watch a little time. watch a, watch Jimmy's show on TiVo to see if uh, any of the jokes made it on, and uh, possible beat off session. Go to bed about two, and uh, start over again. There you go. All right, we're going to need to uh, take ourselves a little break. When we come back, we'll talk to uh, Lindsay, who's twenty two, fantasizes about husband with other women. Wants to know if a threesome's going to hurt the marriage. Calling from Utah of all places. Mm-hmm. After this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number. I'll oh, forget about that. We don't need your calls. Lindsay. Yeah. 22. You want to have the threesome? Or you fantasize about a threesome with your husband? Well, mainly I just fantasize about him with another woman. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I would, well, My main question was I was wondering why... I've been thinking this way. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. Because you're you're getting too close to your husband. You need to inject a little hell into this. Mm-hmm. You need to push things away. You need to create some chaos. Oh. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, what about the part where you uh, fantasize about him with another woman? Is Do you fantasize about him cheating on you? Or do you fantasize about him with an ex-girlfriend? How do you do that? Uh, mainly cheating. Or when he tells me another woman is good looking, it kind of makes, you know, it turns me on. And? You know, it, he'll tell me things like that. Or when he watches pornos, I'll, it turns me on. But does it turn you on in a sort of naughty or negative way, even? Like, it's sort of, a, it turns you on, but... He, it, it's not a good thing. I mean, th- there's plenty of things in life that you sort of lust after that are wrong. Do, do you know what I mean? Does it have a yeah. wrong feel to it? Yeah. Like you're not proud of yourself for thinking that way? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Could be. You know, I don't I think <laughs> when people, people won't venture a guess on their own feelings. I'm just listening for a smoke alarm. All right. So, like, do you feel bad when you have these feelings? Uh I don't no. know. I don't know. You don't. Okay. So what about, how long have you been? All right. Well, let's, where's your dad? He's at home. He's at home. I have a really, have a really good relationship with my dad. Okay. Love him very much. Very much. And you've never had any problems with uh, intimacy, like you're in a relationship and it just felt like you're being suffocated and you needed to get out? Oh, uh, yeah. I used to. You used to. I met my husband. And what's different about him? I don't know. It's just different with him. He's okay. been married for about three years. And tell me about him. What kind of guy is he? It's different. He's, he's really good guy. Mm-hmm. And the other guys were not such good guys. Um, no, not really. Yeah, this is mm-hmm. this is that. No, but she got out of that. She felt like she needed to get out of those. Right. She felt suffocated in those, and those weren't working right. And now here's one that works, but she's got to yeah, inject but- the chaos back into this one too. Would you? Uh, would you? seriously consider uh, having a threesome or letting him screw around with somebody? I've actually thought about it. There's a really close friend of mine that I've asked and Mm. now that's all he can think about. Oh, your husband? Yeah. Mm. I told him the way I felt. Is this friend of yours uh, attractive? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, hold on, where where does uh, producer Ann? Maybe you can chime in here. Where's this uh, never-ending supply of uh, sort of attractive single twenty-something-year-old women who are like these uh, surrogate uh, vaginas? You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, uh, me, me and uh, Nancy are having ourselves a relationship over here. Uh, uh, wh- could you blow my husband while I masturbated? Or you're single, aren't you? Hey, he wants to f you. His birthday's coming up. <laughs> His birthday's coming up, and we've done the whole. Farrell's thing. Uh, that's old. <laughs> we tried the softball thing. That seemed boring. He wants to F you. Are you, are you cool with that? Like, where, where's this endless supply of just, you know, attractive 23-year-old single women who are just, yeah, uh, yeah, I guess I could blow the guy a little. I mean, with that, like this? Should I just, you want me to blow him now? Or 
Oh, what time is it? Okay, so when? Friday? This Friday. Yeah, I'll blow them. I'll bring my blowing pumps. <laughs> yeah, and you, and what, what? Should what? I? Should no. Sh- and then, like, no, it's crazy. And like, what about me and you? Should I go down on Did you? Did you ever have or? friends or your sister have friends or anything that got into no, this stuff? No, absolutely not. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It, and it's kind of, or like if they ask you, like, look, I'd like you to go down on me for a while. And then we could both sort of team my husband. Like, we both blow him simultaneously. And then it's like, ah, geez, I'm really sorry, but it's just not, my, like, they feel guilt racked now. If somebody asks them this and they won't, they won't accommodate. Lindsay, your friend said this would be cool? No, she's on, kind of on the ups and downs about it. She thinks it'll ruin our relationship but and our relationship. She's got to give it some thought, though. Yeah. Well, it will, Lindsay. I, like to give it some th- I even like to give it some thought person, too. Like you're, Just like you're asking your friends to borrow $800. Yeah. Times are pretty tight, but I don't know. I mean, if you didn't pay me back, there'd be some tension. I, I just don't want it to be a scene. It's what not, do you need it for again? It's not about the blowjob. Why job. is it important? It's not about the blowjob. All yeah. right, so, Lindsay, it sounds like you're trying to uh, tear this thing apart. We don't trust your instincts. Here's the final determiner. Do you have kids? I have two. Right, now, you can't do Now this. you can't, you, are you idiot. Are you an addict, Lindsay? You've been addicted to anything? Speed? No. You've never been addicted to anything in your life? Um, I used to be. What were you addicted to? Math. Math. All right, that, that's, that's what Didn't I Didn't I yell speed? I know the speed. This, this is, this is your part of your addiction. Listen, Spindley. You got two kids, screwball. You got to start acting like an adult. You understand? I'm an adult. Yeah, barely. Come on, you well, got not, two kids. Now focus on you're it. You're not behaving like one. And I, I do suggest, I, I know you're not in recovery. I suggest, you, if you are in recovery, you talk to your sponsor about this. This is, uh, you're on your way into a relapse. It's funny. Now, if I, I said speed, she said meth. If I say meth, I bet she says speed. Right. <laughs> so it's, it's always weird. It's like, no, no register. There you go. Uh, listen, I know that speed sound. It's that it's that sun blasted white trash mm-hmm. thing. I'm a good mom. I shoot a little. Yeah, I shoot some smack and uh, have a threesome and turn a trick now again. And I'm no stranger to the booze, but I, I take care kids. of my kids. I love them. I love them. They're like chain smoking and there's veins popping out of their forehead. I love them. I'm good to them. Don, 23. They start explaining what they would do. Hey, if anyone tried to do anything to my kids, I'd kill them. It was like that. It's like, oh, you're a great mom because you'd put a coat hanger through someone's neck if they ever try to do anything. I'm a great mom. I kill you. I kill you if you try anything. Don. Hello. You 23. Yes. What's up? Um, is it possible for my boyfriend to give me a yeast infection? Are you getting recurrent yeast infections? Um. Well, the thing is, is I'm going to school um, a few hours away, and I only see him maybe like once a month. Mm-hmm. And um, every time that we have sex, I end up getting a yeast infection, and I cure it, and then we have sex again, and then I get another one. It's possible that that's what's happening, but it's even more common that just having something introduced into your vagina causes a yeast infection. Is he wearing a condom? Um. Yeah. You might try changing brands. It might be the irritation from that. It's, it's a, so you have sort of an ecosystem in there that gets upset when he uh, enters. So it's possible I'm allergic to him then? Not even well, allergic. Not, not, just, okay. It just you know, it upsets the balance of power uh, in there. And you can't, he can't give you yeast infection if he's wearing a condom. Okay. Right? I can't. No. All right. Guys don't normally. What are guys? Guys give women uh, bladder infections, right? Mm-hmm. But then that's they don't just, give that's, yeast. just from hitting against the urethra. And the yeast is usually... Women get yeast infections on their own, right? It's in there and it overgrows or something upsets the environment there. But it's really, it's like it, you can't introduce foreign objects into that area. Like, you can't bring, like, remember when guys went to the moon and they got moon rocks? Yeah, you can't have any moon rocks. They didn't, they didn't just let the astronauts just carry them home and throw them in their koi pond. Right. They had to watch them for, like, uh-huh. months, make sure everything was cool. Remember when you used to go wait in line to go see moon dust? It'd be in museums and things. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. You'd be like, hey, look at that moon dust. It'd be a like, little vial. Like, you'd be like, no, no, that's just dust dust that's <laughs> gathered actually on the case that the moon dust is in. That's the moon dust. Oh, really? That's not the dust dust? Yeah, that, the idea was that the moon somewhere. But you get over it. I don't know what you were expecting. The you know, Moon rock looks like a piece of lava rock mm-hmm. or looks like any rock, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Now, why should it be all that different? It's not really that far away from us if you're, mm-hmm. if you're you know, in... in uh, Planetary terms. Let's uh, let's take another call here and talk to uh, Eric. Still not as exciting as the La Brea tar pits. <laughs> billions, billions of years ago, where we stand, 
wolves roamed wild. Really? The this, this 76 station not there? No. No. Millions of years ago. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I believe it. So no difference than no difference from the uh the uh, miracle mile of Wilshire and let's say uh sure. I don't know Van Nuys, Beverly Hills, uh, no, no no different. No millions of years <laughs> ago. There was none Well, no, is it these wolves came upon these same tar pits yeah. millions of years ago. Well, what about the Robinson's May? <laughs> that now that's an old building. The ore box? Ore box, that's old. <laughs> I've seen my grandmother told me that was around when she was a kid. <laughs> Millions of years ago, none of this was... Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. Eric? Yeah, I'm here. You're 29. Right, I'm 29. Your wife's uh, breasts taste weird because she's uh, on medication? Well, I don't know if that's it or not. What, medica- uh, what medication is she on? Uh, I know she's on Neurontin. She has epilepsy, and she's on a couple others. She's, she's changed a few recently, but... All right, well, maybe it's causing her to produce breast milk, which is one thing that medicines commonly do. Well, I know. I know when she was pregnant with our daughter, yeah. um, she wasn't allowed to breastfeed. But I don't. I well, mean, that, that's I because guess. that is because some of these medicines can be, be excreted in the breast milk. But she normally shouldn't be having excretions out of there. But many psychotropic psychiatric medications will cause breast milk production, and that would taste funny, possibly. Yeah. All right, hey, it's good times. Yeah. We're gonna take ourselves a little break. We'll be right back. That's it. I make myself a note here to bring in uh, some songs I want to hear tomorrow night. Oh, we for, forgot uh, for your birthday. Let's go out with a little blood, sweat, and tears. Tomorrow's huh? uh, tomorrow's my right birthday. Right now is your birthday. No, 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 I, don't, I don't get into that crap. Uh, make myself a little uh, bring, uh, bring, bring uh, songs. Deep Purple. Yeah. Yeah. Hum- Humble Pie. Maybe some we'll, new stuff, yeah? Maybe we'll hear some uh, Hocus Pocus yeah. by Focus. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that one? Though? Guy, guy yodels in the <laughs> song. It's good times. All right, so uh, I look forward to that tomorrow night. Until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. What happened? you get dropped on your head when you were younger? No, my sister hit me with a frying pan, though. That could do it. <laughs> yeah! This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.